You're looking good and it feels good to be with you today. I'm Kendall Bryan Hunter and this is News with the Eyes of Faith, where I talk about news from the perspective of Jesus Christ and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. I'm sponsored by this book, Consider My Servant Job, by myself, buy it. Published by Cedar Fort, Consider My Servant Job. And don't get confused when you do a search engine. My last name is Hunter. Job sometimes are used as a job hunter, and you get a lot of uh, Munster sites. So there you go. So uh, item number one in the news, Joe Biden is still president. And we should never get used to that fact. The whole point of him not running is because his, his uh, mental acuity is shot. So he can't run for president, but he can be president. Um, the Reason Magazine has this article, it's called Operation Bubble Wrap. Uh, remember how we'd see these videos and Biden was kind of... And people were hurting him away and we'd say, hey, wait a minute, uh, that, that guy is kind of like, this is like a grandpa's escape from the arrest home. And, oh, no, 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 sorry. Well, that was actually true. We were seeing what we saw, and people were trying to uh, trick us into believing something that wasn't true. Operation Bubble Wrap, Reason Magazine, link below. Well, have you noticed that uh, Vice President Harris seems to be flip-flopping? There's an article in the Desert News about that. Um, is she evolving in her opinions? Is she getting more information and making a better choice? Or is this, as the Book of Mormon teaches, flattering words and fair promises? Once again, the word is confuseocracy. Confuseocracy. Think about it. They're trying to confuse us. She's adopting the law of Donald Trump's positions on things uh, such as, uh, you know, taxing tips. And it's just a way <clears throat> to confuse you and voting for the wrong person. Uh, Vice President Harris again. She is her uh, tour with her bus. My show, I can do that. Uh, it's called the Reproductive Freedom Tour. So she's framing her campaign as abortion. Now, this is interesting. The, uh, could be the first female president, and uh, she doesn't have any, she's married, but she doesn't have any children. Um, so you don't want to make fun of fertility issues. Um, but. Uh, First female president, no children, and she wants to make her campaign about killing babies. You remember that passage in the book of Isaiah that's also in the book of Mormon? Uh, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Okay, uh, let, let's get clear on the doctrine um, about abortion. Uh, radicalized autonomy. I can do whatever I want. I have free agency, which is not a scriptural term. The commandment is, thou shalt not kill, nor do anything like unto it. Thou shalt not kill, nor do anything like unto it. Now also think of, about abortion in terms of pre-mortality. What it would be like for uh, pre-mortal spirits watched as their embryonic bodies are ripped from their mother's wombs. Think of abortion in terms of the spirit of Elijah, the hearts of the fathers turning towards the children, the hearts of the children turning towards the fathers. Uh, purpose of mortality is one of the purposes is to get a body and the devil's punishment is that he doesn't have a body and abortion denies bodies you, you, you clear on the doctrine uh, or, or are you more allegiant to your political party editorial in the guardian um, this is from uh, Nazreen Malik and the, the editorial says the rights obsession with childless woman isn't just about ideology it's essential to the capitalist machine Nazreen Malik, uh, Guardian, that's a UK, British, uh, uh, royal, she, she's a royal subject of His uh, uh, Majesty King Charles III. But you notice how she's framing this, uh, children in terms uh, of a Marxist frame about capitalism. Children exist just to run uh, businesses. I mean, it's funny because you, you get locked into 19th century uh, belching satanic machines, steel mills, which... Uh, aren't really the, the norm today, especially as we're shifting towards a robot-based economy. Uh, does your job have a 401k and uh, education and reimbursement? Mine does. Uh, my goodness, I'm looking at, it's September, I'm looking at all the uh, 
all the dividends being paid on my, uh, my on my stock account, my, my stock portfolio. But don't pay attention to what she says. Pay attention to her framework. It's Marxist. Is your framework Marxism is, or is your framework the family proclamation? Abortion is your framework women's rights or is it the family proclamation? Deseret News. I'm just re repeating. I am robotically repeating the Deseret News. Utah Republicans attend church more. This goes in we talked about last week about who uh, attends church more. Now, this is interesting. If people on the left, Democrats, value community so much, why don't they go to church, which is a community? I, I think Robert Bork, who was actually an associate, a friend of President Dallin H. Oaks, if you ever read President Oaks's biography, um, in his book, Slouching Towards Gomorrah, President, or uh, I should say, Judge Bork talked about two things that drive the left, radical egalitarianism and radical individualism. And so you, certainly with the egalitarianism, when you show up to church, you have hierarchy. Certainly with you have a clergy, and of course the biggest hierarchy, God. And if you're in egalitarianism, that whole God thing just rubs you the wrong way. Um, and the individualism, you have all the commandments. But also, it's this weird tension. Is a One thing that Bork missed is the need for community. So egalitarianism, individualism, and community. And those three are all at odds many times. So you think about it, it's, it's emotionally attached to incoherent things is the problem. I want this, I want that, and I want, it's all incoherent, but it's just emotional attachment. Well, the McKinney Temple, Texas, is still in limbo. And this is a quote from the Deseret News again. Uh, church attorneys uh, Richard Abernathy and Jared Pace write, Nothing in the, town fair, uh, in the town of Fairview's code of ordinances would justify denying the church's application. The town's staff report correct, uh, correctly concludes that the church meets all legal requirements for necessary approval. Now think about that. The rule of law and religious discrimination. If we're meeting the requirements, what's the hold up? <clears throat> There's something else, something else going behind the scenes, something uh, extra legal. There we say, Gaddy Anton. Okay, uh, in the news, we got a update, non-update about BYU's medical school from uh, President Reese. So, um, this, <laughs> it's like, yes, we're still doing it. We haven't worked out the details is what it said. So cut him some slack. It's going to take a while to do it. Um, like I said, my bet is they'll... Uh, build it on the old Provo High thing. Of course, you're going to do distance learning, but the old Provo High campus is right next to Utah Valley Hospital of the Intermountain Healthcare. Disclaimer, I work there. See? See on my sleeve? So, uh, that's uh, probably where it'll be, but you know, still working out details. Uh, another interesting thing, too, uh, we're sort of a uh, slumpy news week, although the, the issues are very... Uh, very crucial and uh, engaging and uh, vital to us. Elder Holland was on w uh, with Sherry Dew on the Church News podcast, and he talked things about you know his uh, illness, his recovery, miraculous recovery, like David B. Hates. Um, didn't talk about the vision that he had while he was uh, hospitalized. Uh, talked about his life, death, uh, carrying on, and he talked a little bit about what I call the musket hoax talks. Now, what the musket hoax talk is that the, back in 2021, he spoke at a BYU University conference. Now, Elder Holland is a president emeritus of BYU. He's also a general authority. He's also an apostle, so he's on the board of trustees. And this is always, you understand BYU is a religious institution, so apostles talk and give the uh, university direction. And he used this analogy um, that uh, President Oaks, Neil A. Maxwell, and ultimately it comes from the Bible about, uh, have, uh, about using a musket. To defend it, it was used as a figure of speech, but people went bonkers. People who engaged in something called word thinking, who only perceive things as precepts, as rather concepts, cannot get past the figure of speech. Thought that Elder Holland was telling people to buy muskets and to kill kill LGBTQ people. Yeah, go back and read read the hysterics around it. And the question is, how do you engage with charity and with truth? Someone who can't process a figure of speech. But but he talked about that and ex always expressed his love for people of uh, whatever uh, sexual orientation there was. And uh, so I'd, I encourage you to listen. It's a little bit long, and I, they don't have a way you can speed it up. Like, I, I recommend playing this uh, newscast uh, twice as fast so you get through quicker. We're, we're almost around 10 minutes. I should be winding up right now. In fact, I am, because that was the last story. So Elder Holland and the Musket Hoax Talks. Musket hoax talk. Dr. A tongue twister. 
So as always, I'm going to end this uh, newscast with a life hack. Um, this, this is a life hack, is manage your money. Now, managing your money comes in three steps. Get on a budget, get out of debt, and don't do drugs. Make sure you have a written budget. Um, you can do a paper budget. Uh, there's learn how to do a spreadsheet is which I use. There's various online uh, budgeting things. You know, Dave Ramsey has one. I, I, this is not an endorsement. I'm just talk, throwing it out there. Get on, get on a budget. What a budget is, it's a, way, um, it's a way to proactively manage your money. What a budget does is it tracks spending. So you know where your money is going and what it's doing, and you're not caught by surprise. Get out of debt. Your number one barrier to prosperity is debt. Once you get out of debt, you'll be blown away at how rich you get because you're not paying the credit card company. That credit card balance magically moves over into your savings account balance and you can start being a grown-up like getting a stock portfolio like i said I, it's kind of funny is that it's september so they're we're going to start to get a lot of dividends uh, coming in from the various uh, uh stocks i hold and it's it's got this money is just coming out of nowhere because i got out of debt i paid off all of my student loans every last dollar every red cent, every thin dime of my student loans I paid away. And I would not trade the experience and self-discipline I got paying off my student loans for anything else because I learned how to manage money by paying off my student loans. And if you want to destroy someone, cover their student loans, pay it, cancel that, and you'll just destroy a person. So that is my testimony about managing money. And that is news with the eyes of faith.